What's up, everybody? This is Get Much Higher Podcast, and we're here reviewing the much-anticipated album by Kanye West. This is The Life of Pablo Review. You're so happy because oh it's God. finally out. Huge Kanye fan here. I'm, I'm a huge Kanye fan, too, but you're a little bit bigger than me. And uh, this album was just complete trash, and we'll tell you all about it. Yeah, that's nah, just, just joking. Kanye. <laughs> okay, so three years. We waited three years for this shit. Finally got it. It's pretty dope. Yeah. I'm going to start us off by talking about the tracks, but not like we usually do with the track by track. We're just going to just say, give you, give you a little, we're going to tickle your balls. And then we'll, we'll, then we'll actually go for, go for the shaft when, uh, in like a different video, I guess. But, uh, you ready? Yeah, let's do this, man. Track number one, Ultralight Beams. Holy shit. We yeah. get our gospel that we're hoping for. This is a, a, a proclaimed gospel album, and we definitely got a taste of that on a track number one. Yeah. Dope-ass vocals. I don't know who the broad is, but she kills it. She kills it. She nails it. Um, Chance the Rapper oh. nails it. This is uh, one of the sounds that Kanye used to be known for, at least uh, when he did College Dropout and yeah. Late Registration. Uh, the gospel sound is one of my, probably my favorite sound Kanye has ever had, and uh, I was really pleased to hear some of that on this song. Uh, very very smooth, easy to listen to song, mm. eases you into the album like before a, it starts to smack you. First time I heard this, and <laughs> first time I heard this, and like a lot of people I've talked to have the same reaction when they heard this, when they heard this track for the first time, they just had an instant smile from like I have to turn this down now. Fucking why are you texting me when I'm just, just don't just don't fucking do that. Everybody who listened to this for the first time had um. A smile from like ear to ear just listening to this like yeah. what I, two things I found about this album in general first of all this whole album really reflects on uh, his old music I'd say it really is a, a piece of mm-hmm. each album he's ever made combined to one second of all this music just makes you feel good like this is cookout music yeah right? it's great music yeah yeah I was a big fan of that really set me up for the whole album track number two so I'll just stretch yeah. my hands part one Mm-hmm. Now, with part one and part two, what we see is two very different songs with kind of a similar theme, similar beat, I guess, because they are the, the same song, technically, Hence I the guess. part one and two. Yeah, yeah. but uh, part one is really more, it's more uh, more braggy, really is a brag track, um, yeah. but it's, it's a good song, for sure. Yeah, great songs. I mean, it's not like, uh, if you're looking for Nas-type lyricism, lyricism or anything like that or great storytelling it's not gonna really do that but mm. one thing about this whole album is great production and his uh his performance on all the songs is on point yeah. as far as making the track sound really good yeah and then uh after we get that braggy part one part two is actually uh it's actually a song that he cried about writing really he talks wow. about just like some of the realest shit he really could talk about he's got uh, his mom in there his dad in there who he's really close to never rapped about before ever and yeah, then sure. just comes out and talks about him on this song, and uh, along with along with other things. But uh, like he, he straight up says it is, it, you know, my mom died in Hollywood, blah blah blah. But mm-hmm. it's yeah. a very personal song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hence the crying while writing. Mm. Uh, track number four. Uh, what was track number four? I want to say highlights, but I'm gonna check. No, it's because famous. Is it? It's fam- uh, famous. Famous. Famous has Rihanna in it, and we get Rihanna before we get Kanye, so we instantly get the taste of what the hook's gonna be like. And mm-hmm. Rihanna had a really good place on this track. I thought I thought Rihanna was the perfect choice for the vocals. Yeah. And One thing about Rihanna is I really like her with Kanye. Yeah. Actually, I feel like synergy. yeah, I feel like Rihanna's best feature is always Kanye, mm-hmm. or featuring on an album or anything like that is always Kanye. And people talk about like Eminem and Rihanna being good together. Mm-hmm. I don't even like Eminem and Rihanna together. I really like. How Rihanna's voice sounds on a Kanye beat. Yeah, it's look at uh, uh, Rum is Town. Yeah, perfect example. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the Diamonds remix. Yeah, and uh, on this song, the second that beat drops after that, like, Rihanna comes in. The beat drops, and instantly we have a taste of just how good the production is gonna get mm-hmm. on this album. The beat is out of this world. It is not even close to the best one on this track. I mean, on this album. And then up until track four. You see different beats, different sounds, different vibes on all tracks. Yeah. Even though, yeah. And track number four. Um, track number five. Five. Feedback. Feedback. Ooh. My favorite song probably on this whole album. Yeah. Uh, number one thing on this album that I, or on this song that I like is the beat. The beat just like smacks you in the mouth. Yeah. And just like hits you and just makes you feel good. This is my second favorite beat on the album. Love the beat on this. I know what your favorite one is. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's just a dope 
feel good, not necessarily feel good, but just a really dope vibe for the beat. It's real hard, and then he just comes in with bars, and you know they're aggressive, they're like on point as far as the flow goes, mm -hmm. and uh, like I just love the Steve Austin, Steve Jobs line. Yeah, that's that my favorite cool. line. And uh, when uh, when you were listening to this for the first time, this is maybe my second time heard of, uh, hearing the album when I showed it to you. We got to the song, and you, and I was like, "What do you think?" And you were like. This production is uncomparable to any other beat yeah. and any other production. Like you can't even rate this like you rate other albums. This is like as really as Kanye changing his style again, like he does with every album. And this time it really it's a collaboration of all his previous albums, but it's still a new sound. And he's just created an entire new lane in hip hop, and I'm sure this is gonna be really influential. Yeah, this is so far up until track five, more sounds than you've ever heard ever on a Kanye. Yeah on a Kanye album and uh, yeah paying homage to old styles and old sounds that he had but mm. the evolution of them and sort of bringing them into 2016 on this album and it's really like one album nothing ever has sounded like it nothing ever will sound like it in the future mm. and uh, yeah that's such a good song so about that we had uh, some technical difficulties um, <laughs> track number six is Low Lights now uh, this is a, it's not really a song as much as like it's a voice talking three meaningful words and uh, what I got out of this was uh, um, My Beautiful Versions of Fantasy there's uh, a track that's just words also right after Lost in the World it's uh, Who Will Survive in America this reminds me of Who Will Survive in America and it may not be as as empowering but it's equally meaningful and uh, that's that's what I got out it of it it seems very personal as well like yeah. the, the female voice and I could be wrong it, it, to me it sounds like the voice of his mom or his grandma mm. um, talking to him uh, like from heaven or just yeah. from maybe a dream or something like that and just sort of like uh, explaining how she feels about him feels about Kanye yeah. in, in a way and it's uh, it's not like so much a song like you said it's more just talking but it's still something that adds a lot to the album moving mm. forward yeah. and, uh, and then, uh, so that, that was low lights and then get let me get highlights Mm -hmm. Now this is uh, this is the first song that he performed on uh, SNL last weekend. Crazy show, by the way. He had two performances, and uh, one skit. All of them were phenomenal. But uh, Young Thug's on the hook on this one. Yeah, and that blew my mind because I've never been a, a Future fan before. I've never been a Young Thug fan before. But Young did, Thug yeah. on this sounded so good. He sounded like he laid off the lean. He laid off the lean yeah. for this track, and yeah. it's like it's almost like Kanye told him, "No, no, no lean today." We're just gonna smoke some weed, and he sounded like I just said to him. This sounded like the dream to me. Mm. Like he didn't sound like Young Thug, um, which is actually really good because I don't like Young Thug. Uh, overall, it's a good vibe on the song. I don't think it was anything to take away really lyrically or message wise. I mean, he does come in with uh, bars at the end. He does. He does. Like he, I think he raps more on this than he does on any, any other song. He does, but it's not so much like there's a message or anything like that. It's super mm. important compared to some of the other songs. No, just the. Um, it's a great sounding song. And I think it's going to be the lead single to this album. Yeah, me too. Or at least since the album's been but, released. Uh, but one uh, thing, uh, RJ uh, might have hit it first. Mm -hmm. Only problem is I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> Next song. That was a great line. That was a great yeah. line. Is it RJ or Ray J? It's Ray J. Ray J. It's Ray J. Um, yeah, they might have been best friends if they yeah. weren't fucking the same bitch. And then we got Freestyle 4. Mm-hmm. This was a fun track, I thought. Great track. It was actually, it was a vine of Tyler, the creator, just wiling out to this. Yeah. And, um, sorry about that again. Uh, we're back. Freestyle 4. This is track number 7. Uh, there is a freestyle near the end of the, end of the song. Beginning of the song, you hear a lot of distortion. Mm. Uh, I feel like this is the Yeezus era coming out on this song. But it's Yeezus era, definitely more refined. It's almost like it's if he did Yeezus on the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, yeah. this is what it would come out as. It's like if he had the idea for Yeezus, yeah. but he wasn't super angry yeah. like when he made the album. Yeah. But like the same like distortion kind of. And he's like, he's talking about like, uh, like fuck, like if he fucked a girl right here, would everybody in the room start fucking? Like, am I that influential? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, and, the, and then throughout the entirety of this song, he, he does have a very... Very auto tuny sound as you would expect with with the Yeezus kind of feel, but I love this track. I, I love this song too. It's just there's so much there lyrically. There's so much there as far as trying different things uh, creatively with the sound, mm. with the production. Uh, yeah, it was so interesting, and there was never a point where there was a dull moment on this album. Yeah, 
that. Or on that song, sorry. Absolutely. I would say that. Then uh, after that, we get the, the track that he did in the skit on SNL. Uh, I love Kanye. Yeah. I used to love Kanye. I love. I don't know. That's I fine. love you like Kanye loves Kanye. Kanye. Yeah, that's. I think, first time I heard that, I was like, "That's kind of weird." And then I thought about it, and I was like, "This is the classic, like cheesy Kanye that everybody loves." Like, oh, Kanye, I like, love that. I'd yeah. say if there's one thing about Kanye's lyricism that is that he has above anybody else, it's his ability to be super cheesy, but in those few cheesy words, also have the like super meaningful, um, like like. Uh, his cheesiness is mostly double layered. entendres, yeah. right? Like, yeah. it's very layered cheesiness, yeah. And, <coughs> it, uh, yeah, I think he keeps that cheesiness to uh, keep up with that sort of beginner type of persona that he has when it comes to rapping. Mm. You know, he's always talks about, like, oh, no one ever took me serious as a rapper. And it's like, well, you don't sound like a serious rapper yeah. sometimes. And that's a perfect example, but it's almost like poetry. Yeah. You know, it's like he wrote a poem about himself and it's like, they want the old Kanye. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, they do want the old Kanye. I'm one of those people. But this is the old Kanye. That is the old Kanye. And it's just like spun around 360 and it's just like, holy shit, yeah. cup of coffee in the big time. I don't know what that means. The wrestling fans will get it. Okay, well, I used to be a wrestling fan and I still don't get it. After this, <laughs> after we got uh, track number 10, thank you, Chance. Um, this is Waves. So yeah. this album was actually delayed by two days because Chance wanted Waves to be on the album. So the Kanye and Chance at the studio for like 48 hours straight. Actually, I'm going to talk about this in the podcast for you yeah, later. Yeah, we'll do this later in the podcast. Yeah, but um, but uh, Waves, it's got uh, Chris Brown on it. You don't like this that much. I personally, I vibe so hard with this. I'm listening to it the whole time. I'm actually like... I'm thinking about waves. I'm thinking about an ocean. Every beat hits you like a wave. It goes in and it pulls you out, and there's like a tide effect throughout the middle of the song. And I, I love this. The reason I didn't necessarily like it, I didn't necessarily like the fit that Chris Brown had on this song. And that's just me. I don't particularly like Chris Brown's sound. It has nothing to do with his personality or shit kicking Rihanna or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't. I'm kind of tired of his voice, and I'm kind of tired of. Of his sound overall and uh, I just didn't like the way he was used on that song mm. uh, as far as the production though and the beat making and the creativity on that front really really good yeah as far as that standing out on this album though I think there's so many better songs on this album mm. and so many more creative new sounding beats on this album mm. uh, for me to even care too much about the song yeah and uh, next track FML um, my second favorite track on the album starts off super slow, super meaningful. Then the weekend comes in with that dope ass hook. Mm -hmm. Then Kanye just spits like actual bars, and it's cool because you don't expect him. And he comes in a little earlier than you expect him to, also, so it kind of just hits you like a fucking wall. Yeah. And then he finishes that. The weekend does his, uh, his hook again, but he does it twice that time. Then we get really distorted sounds, and I'm not sure quite what those mean yet, but I'm sure this is. It's just an abrupt stop. Yeah. It's an abrupt end to that song. Mm -hmm. uh, which I really liked because yeah, it's too. different. You know, it's a. It, that's one thing I love about Kanye is he always hits you with like the left hook out of nowhere. Yeah, and it's just it's another left hook out of nowhere because it starts off like you said, nice and smooth, uh, very like R and B ish almost, yeah. uh, trap R and B, and then you have like his bars coming coming on this song, and it's just like more left field shit and it's just like you don't expect to hear the sounds that you're gonna hear and that's what I love about that song yeah it is a great song but it's yeah it's not one of my tops after that real friends now we've heard this previously this this song much like uh, parties in LA and yeah. facts were uh, released as a single as a part of the Good Friday thing before the album I think it was changed ever so slightly for the album version but I love it I think this is a really good song it, it hits home it's one of the songs that really Anybody can relate to, so it's it's easy to vibe with. Mm -hmm. uh, beats really cool. Um, this I I'd, I'd had Ty Dolla Sign's last album, and I've been vibing with Ty Dolla Sign, but it wasn't <coughs> until this song that I actually really took Ty Dolla Sign seriously as a vocalist. And I think that he his hooks and this uh, yeah, I think really well done, perfect for this track. Yeah, he he had a good performance on the song. Uh, Real Friends, the more times I hear the song, the more I like the song. Yeah, me too. And it's because it's more of a lyrical song, mm -hmm. which is a change up for if you're a Kanye fan. You're expecting just dope beats, dope beat switches and things like that. And, and the beat itself is very mellow. It's very like 
nothing t- too much to stand out about or anything like that. You, you wouldn't even think it's a Kanye beat. Yeah. If you were just to hear this on its own, uh, you would think that maybe he made it for Common or some somebody like that, an artist like that. But I really like the song. Really like the meaning to the to the song. I really like the lyrics. Um, yeah, it's definitely a song that I'm I want to listen to. It's you one know, of my favorite songs. You know who would, you know who would rap over this beat really well? Push T. Push a T. Yeah. He could. He could. Like with his new fucking crazy ass rhyme scheme. Yeah. He could. Yeah. It's not it's not the first person that came came to mind, but definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I think uh, maybe Chance could rock that beat. Yeah, actually a Chance could. I, I hope he does that. But uh, Spazzy D can do it. Spazzy we, D did we it. We know that. Um, next one. Oh my god, this is my favorite album on the uh, it's favorite song on the album is Wolves. <laughs> Holy shit, we've waited a year for the CD quality of this song, and I'm a little. I, I'll be honest, I'm actually pretty upset that the Vic Mensa verse got taken out. Mm-hmm. Saya was good, but Vic Mensa's verse don't fly so high. Your wings might now you must do good to be. Tr- I loved that so yeah. much, and now it's gone. But Kanye just said that he's fixing Wolves, uh, so we might and. Hopefully that's because he got a lot of feedback about the sign Vic Mensa lacking, and he's gonna add that. But what we did get after he, uh, what we did get off of Wolves after he took out Vic Mensa and Sai is a new verse in which he raps, which is good, a little repetitive, but good. And then uh, Frank Ocean has a verse at the very end, and yes. I love that. Yeah, the more I hear Frank Ocean's verse, first time I heard it, I was expecting a lot, uh, something different, not a lot more, just something different. Mm. Uh, and I, the more I listen to it, I really, I, I like it. Like, you know, it's not anything too, too special. It's not my favorite song on the album, like it is for you. Mm. Uh, but the production on the song, uh, the CD quali- quality of it is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing about this song is it's, it's I wish it was maybe a little shorter or something, but it, the CD quality of the production is amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as far as lyrics go, there's nothing too much there. Uh, Frank Ocean's part is great, but I, I, I thought the best verse on that song that's ever been made was the Vic Mensa one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I thought really. Vic, Vic Mensa's verse on the SNL or wherever they performed it. I think it was uh, SNL. It was SNL. Yeah, yeah. and uh, also in Paris, I think. But yeah, at the uh, Euro VMAs or something like that. Louis Vuitton. Yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited to hear the Vic Mensa verse come coming back to the yeah. song. The next is the uh, Silver Server intermission. Silver Surfer intermission. This is a phone call with Max B, which I think is fucking hilarious because, like, how is Wiz Khalifa feeling after starting this beef with Kanye and then Kanye just throws a phone call conversation with Max B in there? I think that's really cool. And, like, it's not that <coughs> special of an intermission, but I like yeah. it quite a bit. I think it adds kind of another layer to this album. It's almost like, like, I feel like a lot of rappers do that. Yeah. Well, they'll just add, like, phone calls or something, and this was just kind of a reminder that, like, hey, I'm also a rapper. Yeah, This yeah. is a conversation I had with you, somebody that's important in the hip-hop community. That's what yeah. I got. I mean, it, it didn't strike me as a real conversation. It still sounded mm-hmm. like it was a recorded thing, but uh, besides that point, it was a nice break from all the music, just to, like, take in everything you just heard and then get ready for something else. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's pretty much all. Like, it's just an intermission. Next one is uh, after. <clears throat> Next one is uh, another personal favorite of mine. This one is Thirty Hours. The song was actually released on Friday uh, when the album was supposed to be dropping. And uh, I think the album version is a little different from the single version, but I preferred the album version. I love this song. It's just another one of those songs where the production just genuinely makes me feel happy. Like yeah, yeah. we still drove thirty hours, and he starts off with bars too. He's got a. And an immediate Amber Rose diss, which is fucking awesome. Yeah. And uh, no beat switch, which which you expected, and I kind of expected a little bit also, just because I don't know. I feel like on a lot of like the the genu- the generally happy songs, Kanye tends to just throw something wild that you don't don't expect. Didn't get this this that this time, but I'm not really upset. I wouldn't say it's generally a happy happy song. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I feel some attitude there, like you know, like he comes oh, off yeah. with that Amber Rose diss. Uh, as far as the beat. I really, really like that beat. Yeah. Like I like the metallic sounds. Yeah. I just like uh, like the fast pace to it. Like it goes from slow to fast a lot on this album. Yeah. The drums. And, uh, are crazy. he just comes in with the, all those bars and it's nice and fast. It's just, that's what I love to hear from and, and rap then, music. And then near the end, it's just kind of like a slow off the dome freestyle. Yeah. Like, well, like that's the thing. Like this is real hip hop. 
You yeah. know what I mean? Like he's really coming in with lyrics mm-hmm. and just laying them out there in such a good way. And his performances on all these songs are perfect. Yeah. Like you know, if he had a music director there telling him like this is how you're supposed to make the song, he made it like that. Like just nailed it every yeah. single time. Ready for the next one? Yeah. What's number tra- uh, what track is this? 17. Track 17. No parties in LA. Yeah. Uh, no more parties in LA. No more parties in LA. So the, again, the album version is a little different from the single version that we were given previously, but I prefer this. The beat was changed ever so slightly, a few uh, extra it was layers tweaked. were added. It was tweaked. It yeah. wasn't necessarily a different song, but... Yeah, but we, yeah. Uh, we started off with a, with a dope sample from uh, Drake's uncle. Then we go into a Kendrick verse, which is really good. And we're thinking, oh, nice, Kendrick brought the bars this song. That's good. Just kidding. Fuck that. Kanye spits for, like, 90 fucking hours. Yeah. And, like, he wrote that entire rap on a flight to Italy for his Easy, easy Season 3 fitting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like one flight, that whole song. He re- yeah, he wrote that song. Uh, he did have a lot of bars on it, but I thought Kendrick had the best verse on that song. I did not. Oh, Kendrick is so good. But I just, I love Kendrick. The, the I love... Was- yeah, his I just love his style. And, the thing yeah. with the thing with Kanye's verse that was cool was that that was the first time we'd actually heard Kanye spit like he used to mm-hmm. in years, and he threw that we want like he it's been at least an album. Yeah, he released that track. He released that track. People are listening to it like they're like that is gonna be the bars of the song. Yeah, and they're not expecting Kanye to go in, and Kanye pretends like he's about to stop. And then he just goes on for another like sixty bars or so. I think it was actually ninety bars in this. Wow. Song. Yeah. Yeah. No. He 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 was amazing on the song, but I think rap wise, I don't think he can really compete with Kendrick Lamar. No, I think Kendrick no. Lamar is the best in the world today at what he does. Yeah. And uh, he proved that again on the song. And Kanye knows how to use it. He knows how to feature that in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a great song. I mean, we have probably all heard it already, but ever so slight changes in the beat. I didn't notice anything else as far as there no. wasn't any new verses or anything on this song. No, not really. And uh, no. Ooh, was, uh, so, <coughs> no, go ahead. I was gonna talk about the next track. Yeah, same here. Oh. <laughs> Great minds they think differently. I no, they don't. really like facts now. Facts yeah. when this dropped as a single, everybody thought it was shit. Even I thought it was shit, and I have a runaway tattoo. It was shit. And then this album version comes out. It's a little less shit. It's a little less shit. But I, I think it's actually a dope track now. He made this before it seemed like he was really biting at Nike and it just didn't work. And I think it's honestly just because the production wasn't where it had to be. And now he's adjusted the beat. He has slightly changed the pace of how he's rapping. Uh, and I thought it was really good. He got rid of like the like the Drakeness of the song. Yeah. It, and before uh, it did sound like he... like. Like he was doing Jumpman, but yeah. his version of Jumpman. Yeah. But this didn't sound like his version of Jumpman. This sounded like his song Facts. Yeah. Um, as far as like it being way way better, I don't necessarily agree with it being way way better, but it is better. Yeah. I, I, all of all I mean by that is before I couldn't stand the song and now yeah. I like it. Yeah, definitely. Now I like the song for sure. Yeah. I really like the beat. I really like what he did with the beat, making it a little less like in your face. Yeah. And just focusing more on the lyrics. And this song is basically all against Nike. Yeah. It's just a big fuck you to Nike. Mm. Uh, yeah. Which is like, he's been obsessing over that for years. Yeah. So I'm kind of like worried about why he cares so much about Nike still. I, I think he's a little bit bitter over that. I mean, I can tell you about that on the podcast. Yeah, we'll talk more about that on the podcast. Um, one, one thing about facts I want to say for the original version, a really good analogy I heard for the original facts was Kanye has just had right. a second kid. You're right. He's stuck in the house 24-7. When he's not in the house, you know what he's doing? He's in the studio. He's making this album. He's cooking it up. Some good good cookout music. <laughs> Finally gets to some time to go to the club. Goes to the club. They're playing Future. He's like, oh, this is what the people that aren't 38 years old are listening to. I'm yeah. going to go rap like this. And that's what he did. Yeah. And then, and then there was a huge backlash yeah. of like, no, we hated that. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, bad, bad, bad. You guys still want it? Okay, we'll give you this. Yeah, thing. it's definitely a lot better. But yeah. it's, yeah. Last song, Fade. Oh, this beat leaked. Yeah. I showed you this beat when it leaked yeah. months ago, and oh. you and we were both like, "Ooh, this could turn into something great." Yeah. And it did. 
This yeah. has got uh, Ty Dolla Sign and Post Malone on it. Uh, shouts to Kylie Jenner for hooking Ky- uh, Kanye and uh, Post Malone up because this song is is that happened. literally what happened? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, Kylie Jenner listened to Post Malone and she was like, "Yeah, she got Post Malone." And Kanye was like, "Dope, I'll do that." And then that thing happened. It, I love this song. Oh, it makes you so happy. It yeah. gives you energy. That and beat, first of all, this beat is like, and compared it's to It's bitter. Any, it's sour. It's sweet. It's all those senses. Oh. It's all those flavors all rolled into one, and it's something completely new and original. And just when you hear it, you feel like, shit, this is kind of grimy, but this awesome is, and happy and, like, vibey. And this you're song like, is MDMA. Yeah, you listen to a song like this. Like, like you're, at sh- mm. you're, at, you're at shitty basement parties snorting green yeah. ecstasy, and <laughs> it hurts. And then somebody gives you this pill, and they're like, yo, this is Molly. Yo. And that's fake. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a good beat. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's le- this beat is legendary, man. Okay. Like, well, want to talk about the album as a whole now? Cause we got a, this is supposed to be a short video, and I feel like we've been rambling. Yeah. But, okay. There's so much to say about this album. Okay. Um, overall, what did you feel that the album is gonna mean, and what does it mean um, to you? I think this is gonna be the most influential album to be released for the next 25 years, unless Kanye releases something better. Actually, no. I'm gonna say. She's probably going to release it. I'm going to say it's going to be the most influ- influential album in hip-hop for the next five years. Yeah. Uh, that's make- more suitable. I was going to yeah. say maybe five years. And yeah. yeah. And um, I think this is one of the best albums I've heard in my entire life. Not just as a Kanye fan, Stan, but just as somebody who enjoys hip-hop music. Like you even said, like this is in a completely different language. Yes. I don't even think this is hip-hop. This is no. so much more than hip-hop. This is so much more than rap music. This is just this is just art, being an artist. Yeah, this is just him being an artist, expressing himself, being creative, trying new things, and then all the things that he's tried in the past, like the Yeezy, the Yeezus album, uh, 808s and Heartbreaks, yeah, uh, Late Registration, College Dropout, all those sounds that he had, he brings that to the 21st century. Really, he brings that to like yeah. his own century in 2016 and refines it and just makes everything sound so current so modern even though he has all those old sounds and it just makes something completely new completely different i've never heard anything like this album yeah i think uh, i think the best way to describe it and the best way to end it if you're down yeah is um i forgot what i was gonna say Oh yeah, <clears throat> this is not a hip hop album. This is an autobiography of a hip hop artist. I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the life of Pablo. Yeah, this is the life of Pablo. Be it uh, Escobar or Picasso or uh, a small Mexican man with a lemonade stand. <laughs> <laughs> like this is it. This is the life of Ye. The life of Ye. Yeah. Yeezy. Yeah, that was a great album. I. Definitely recommend listening to it. Rate it. Uh, 9.8. 9.8 is mine. I would go 9.7. 9.5. 9.5. Get Chris Brown off the album. Get Vic Mensa on. We got a 10 here. Actually, yeah, though. Yeah. Really, though. Bye. Bye. When they heard this track for the first time, they just had an instant smile from, like, I have to turn this down now. Fucking, why are you texting me when I'm doing Just don't. Just don't fucking do that. Everybody who listened to this for the first time had um, a smile from like ear to ear just listening to this. Like, what yeah. I, two things I found about this album in general. First of all, this whole album really reflects on uh, his old music. I'd say it really is a, a piece of mm-hmm. each album he's ever made combined to one. Second of all, this music just makes you feel good. Like, this is cookout music, yeah. right? It was great music. Yeah. Yeah, I was a big fan of that. Really set me up for the whole album. Track number two. Uh, I'll just stretch yeah. my hands part one mm-hmm. now with part one and part two what we see is two very different songs with kind of a similar theme similar beat I guess because they are the, the same song technically Hence I the guess. part one and two yeah, yeah. but uh, part one is really more it's more uh, more braggy it really is a brag track um, yeah. but it's, it's a good song for sure yeah great songs I mean it's not like uh, if you're looking for Nas type lyricism lyricism or anything like that or great storytelling it's not gonna really do that but mm. one thing about this whole album is great production and his uh his performance on all the songs is on point yeah. as far as making the tracks sound 
really good. Yeah, and then uh, after we get that braggy part one, part two is actually uh, is actually a song that he cried about writing. Really, he talks wow. about just like some of the realest shit he really could talk about. He's got uh, his mom in there, his dad in there, who he's really close to never rapped about before. Ever. And yeah, then ever. just comes out and talks about him on this song. Yeah, let's do this, man. Shy number one, ultra light beams. Holy shit! We yeah. get our gospel that we're hoping for. This is a, a, a proclaimed gospel album, and we definitely got a taste of that on a track number one. Yeah. Dope ass vocals. I don't know who the broad is, but she kills it. She kills it. She nails it. Um, Chance the Rapper oh. nails it. This is uh, one of the sounds that Kanye used to be known for, at least uh, when he did College Dropout and yeah. Late Registration. Uh, the gospel sound is one of my, probably my favorite sound Kanye has ever had, and uh, I was really pleased to hear some of that on this song. Uh, very, very smooth, easy to listen to song, mm. eases you into the album like before a, it starts to smack you. First time I heard this, and <laughs> first time I heard this, and like a lot of people I've talked to have the same reaction when they heard this. What's up, everybody? This is Get Much Higher Podcast, and we're here reviewing the much anticipated album by Kanye West. This is The Life of Pablo Review. You're so happy because oh it's God. finally out. Huge Kanye fan here. I'm, I'm a huge Kanye fan too, but you're a little bit bigger than me. And uh, this album was just complete trash, and we'll tell you all about it. Yeah, that's nah, just I'm just suck. joking. <laughs> okay, so three years. We waited three years for this shit. Finally got it. It's pretty dope. Yeah. I'm going to start us off by talking about the tracks, but not like we usually do with the track by track. We're just going to just say, give you, give you a little, we're going to tickle your balls. And then we'll, we'll, then we'll actually go for, go for the shaft when, uh, in like a different video, I guess. But, uh, you ready? And, uh, along with, along with other things, but, uh, like he, he straight up says it is, it, you know, my mom died in Hollywood, blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. it's yeah. a very personal song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hence the crying while writing, mm. uh, track number four. Uh, what was track number four? I want to say highlights, but I'm gonna check. No, it's because famous. Is it, it's fame, uh, famous. Famous. Famous has Rihanna in it, and we get Rihanna before we get Kanye, so we instantly get the taste of what the hook's gonna be like. And mm -hmm. Rihanna had a really good place on this track. I thought I thought Rihanna was the perfect choice for the vocals. Yeah. And One thing about Rihanna is I really like her with Kanye. Yeah. Actually, I feel like synergy. yeah, I feel like Rihanna's best feature is always Kanye mm -hmm. or featuring on an album or anything like that. It was always Kanye and people talk